episode three, Gamers Gone Wad. Instagram at Gamers Gone Wad. I realized after editing the last episode, we didn't really talk about our own Instagram. We talked about our separate Instagrams, but not the, the page. So Gamers Gone Wad, same name on YouTube, iTunes, everywhere. Swipe up, get all the goodies. Heck yeah. <laughs> That's funny. We totally forgot to plug ourselves. I know. That's all right. We'll get better at the uh, the self promo. <laughs> how's the uh, How's the last two weeks been? Last two weeks has been pretty good. Um, had a small PR yesterday with my deadlift, so that was a pretty big win. Um, went from three fifty to three fifty five. So I'm really trying ah. to hit that four hundred, like I talked about. Um, yeah. So every little bit helps. Um, we've been doing a lot of deadlift work too, so it's been going good. Nice. Um, but besides that, I actually recently started a whole new uh, diet plan. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so my uh, coach, Chris Carey at uh, Newfound, he's actually giving me like personalized macros. Um, and so what we're doing is we're doing something called carb cycling. And so what that is is you, you have some days where you're like very low car, like ketosis level carbs. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have other days where you like actually eat a lot of carbs and you're just really low fat and then there's like some moderate days in there so it's like this up down middle like you're kind of all over the place yeah um and it changes like every day but the idea is you're like getting your body kind of like um when you take in carbs right your body starts creating like insulin and so taking them out temporarily and putting them back in it kind of like reduces that and there's there's something with like the whole fat burn process that goes into it so you're like basically burning more fat and losing weight. Um, but I mean, that's kind of, you know, that's the thing about going low carb is it's really easy to lose weight when you're going low carb. But the question is, is how long will it last? Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that's cool thing about, uh, doing the carb cycling is it's supposed to be a little bit more like long term after the fact, I guess you could say, cause you're going back and forth and kind of that switching. And so at the end of the eight week cycle that I'm on right now, um, I'm going to get some maintenance macros mm-hmm. and the idea is it'll kind of help me like maintain and I could pretty much eat whatever I want to my macros at that point and stay at the same. So I'm, I'm hoping to see some decent gains and I'm hoping it's not just all going to fall off because, you know, I've, I've, I've done the low carb thing, but it's like, you know, you lose like 10 pounds in a month and then it goes away the next month and it's like, oh, yeah. So, you know, I'm hoping this is a little different, but we'll see how it goes. Interesting. How do you feel? Honestly, I feel I feel pretty good. Um, you know, f- hitting those macros has been a bit of a challenge at some times because it's, you know, it's very strict. Like today is a 70 carb, 120 fat, and like 215 protein. So mm-hmm. it's like that. that's a very little amount of carbs, and carbs are in everything. Sure. So, you know, I'm trying to hit 215 grams of protein without going over the carbs because there's like there's carbs in a lot of um, protein. Like, for example, if you were to get like those um, – like imitation crab meats, there's actually a lot of carbs in those, for example. Um, and then there's like some standard carbs and some other uh, foods and stuff like hot dogs or whatever. Sure. Um, but so it's, you know, just trying to find the food that kind of corresponds to whatever deficit I'm in for the day. Um, low fat days are really interesting. So low fat days are kind of a switch because it's higher carb. So yesterday was a low fat day. So I had 290 yeah. carbs to eat. But I still had to hit my 215 grams of protein. So there's so much fat and, you know, natural like protein sources. So I ended up having to eat like a lot of beans and stuff, Mm -hmm. um, which I like beans. That's all right. Um, But yeah, I actually had to go more almost vegetarian to kind of hit my macros and stay under that fat level. So just kind of interesting there having to like there's a bunch of different levers I've had to pull to actually like hit my macros. Um, and to the point where like I was literally like hand picking out grapes and putting them on a food scale to make sure I was like getting the right amount of carbs in for the day. And it's just kind of crazy, but you know, carb cycling is not like a long-term thing. Um, and if you do any like research on it, like WebMD is like, you know, don't even do it long-term. It's just not sustainable. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but yeah, that's, it's, it's kind of cool though. Cause I'm definitely seeing results. Um, I, so we we're doing like a weekly check-in with this. And so after the, the first check-in and the second check-in, I've lost two pounds, but I mean, that's pretty cool. And that's a week. That's, that's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would say anything more than two pounds a week might, might be too much, right? right? Um, too fast. And that's but... what I've heard. You don't want to burn more than that. So that's, I'm kind of like right there where I want to be, which is cool. Awesome. Um, 
but it's fun and you know I'm definitely hoping to see some gains so we did like some before pictures we're gonna do like after pictures um at the end of this eight week cycle and we'll see what happens is it hard to hit macros being that they're different every day versus like some people struggle just hitting macros right right and you've taken it i would say one step further it's like not only am I going to hit macros every day, but I got to hit a completely different set every day. Like, because <laughs> usually once you kind of get into macros, you you find your breakfast, you find your lunch, and a lot of that stuff might stay the same, or you kind of know what combinations work. Right. Because you always have like a, a 30, 20, 10, or whatever split for your um, your meals. But when they're so drastically different from day to day, I would think that might be a little difficult. Is that, is that tough? So it is, but on the same time, or like the same token, I guess you could say, um, I actually kind of like switching back and forth because I'm not eating the same thing every day. Okay. So, you know, today's a higher fat day. So I've got you know a whole bunch of leftover food from the barbecue this weekend. I'm going to be able to eat like some hot dogs and some bratwurst and stuff and like actually enjoy that kind of food because I have the extra fat to spare. Um, whereas yesterday I was eating a bunch of beans and stuff. But yesterday with the extra carbs... I was actually able to throw a cookie into my my macros, and I had a cookie and enjoyed that. So, um, it, it it there's definitely an additional challenge, and just like it's a giant math equation almost, like because yeah. you're just trying to be like, all right, if I eat this hot dog, I've got to eat X amount of egg whites so I can get this protein in and still be under my fat intake. Right. Um, but that's the thing. There's there's a couple of like what I've identified as like superfoods. Mm -hmm. um for hitting macros and it just makes it very easy to kind of hit those macros so egg whites is one of what i would say a superfood i mean sure. it's just pure protein no carbs no fat yep like that's that's awesome um, yeah i found hot dogs you had unless it's like chicken sausage or turkey yeah. sausage or something like the idea of like beef or pork you know hot dogs fatty meat just has to go like it's really <laughs> tough to eat those right when you're following like anything that has relatively low fat just because it's so lopsided it's like very high fat and moderate protein yeah that was actually one of the things i got burned on um the first week of doing it was i went and i got uh 96 ground beef and i just ate like a whole pound of that in one meal and it's just ah uh, i need ground beef needs some fat man <laughs> you couldn't was, you didn't like it i was not a fan it was very dry yeah. um but you know i have found like you have to eat it fresh like right after you cook it and eat it, it's okay. But I right. if it sits there for a day and then you like microwave it the next day, yeah, it's really dry. Yeah. <laughs> Soy sauce. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, another good one is, is the imitation crab meat on when you have more carbs to spare because mm -hmm. it's low fat. So that's that's the thing. I'm just, I'm finding these foods that's like the opposite of, you know, what I can't have. And that just kind of fits, the, you know, makes it all work pretty well. So. And you're just trying to do this for the eight weeks, and then you're likely done with it. Is that the goal? Yeah. After that, I'd like to get into something more manageable, more realistic, like what we were talking about in previous mm -hmm. podcasts. Like, all right, I'm going to eat fairly clean. You know, I'll eat some chicken thighs. I'm not going to cry about it. You know, like mm -hmm. I'll have that extra fat. I'm still eating pretty clean. This is good. Um, so I'm really looking to get into that maintenance mode here soon. Um I guess you could say this is kind of like a cut right now, just burning as much fat as I can, trying to build some muscle and make that more visible. Um, but yeah, long term, it's it's definitely not sustainable. Um, you know, just there's all, so much good food I want to indulge in, mm -hmm. um, and I'm kind of preventing that right now. But again, it's not long term by any means. I'm just kind of trying it. Yeah, it's always good to experiment and see what yep. what works. And if anything, some of the things with the foods like you're learning, right? So. If you go to a maintenance, all the knowledge you learn about, like, you know, hot dogs or whatever, and the fat and the carbs, and it's still knowledge to have later. Like, it's right. still helpful. Yeah, you'd be surprised. I mean, you, you probably wouldn't, but, like, the average person, there's so many carbs in certain things. Mm -hmm. um, I went for a soda the other day because I was craving a soda, and there was, like, 30 carbs in it. And I was like, what is going on here? Diet soda, man. <laughs> Diet soda for the win. Yep. It's crazy. It's, like so many carbs and everything like i wanted a hamburger bun um and i forget the brand but it was like 30 grams sure of carbs and just so yeah. many carbs um yeah like tortillas can be a little bit better because you can get a whole yep. tortilla that's and it's maybe like 15 carbs right um, right so you can have one taco you know with yeah. your pound of beef you can make it one <laughs> one little six inch taco out of it i've done that before but yeah i find that like tacos 
are the are the are the best. You do two, and that's about thirty carbs if they're about yep. six inch flour tortillas. And then if you still have more protein, then you just eat the excess meat on the side, right? You you pack the tacos as high as you can, and then you eat whatever is left. Yep. And that way, you get a little bit of something other than just strictly eating protein, carbs, and fat. Like three separate piles on your plate, you know, it gets old. <laughs> no, I definitely get that. And it's it's funny the tortillas is something I've actually used too. Um, there's these like little packs of pre-made chicken fajitas that you'll see at like Walmart, Kroger, Food Lion. I think it's like Soul John's or something. Um, and they're actually like super low fat. There's there is some fat in there, but they're very sure. high protein. Um, so that was something I was eating before this, and it's something I've still added into my uh, carb cycling just because it's it's really good just to get that protein. Pre-made chicken that's been yeah. seasoned, yeah. Super easy. It's pretty tasty. You know, I would throw it on a tortilla, add some cheese in there if I had extra fat, and yeah, it's great. Nice. I think the biggest disappointment is I like to drink a lot of milk. Yeah. I didn't realize how many carbs is in milk. Yeah. That that hurts. That's Sad. <laughs> so I haven't had heavy milk cream in like is safe. A week and a half really yeah is it just very low carb (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah so that's like i'll do the heavy cream in the coffee because heavy cream while it doesn't have many carbs at all it has kind of like a sweet taste to it right if you put that in your coffee you can usually skip on like any of the other creamers that would have had carbs or milk but yeah like protein shakes are good a little bit of heavy cream in there because i like to make protein shakes with milk because it tastes so good right but then like you said if you don't have the carbs you can't really do that and almond milk Sorry, it just doesn't compare. No. <laughs> so heavy cream, if, if you can do dairy, right? Heavy cream yeah. is like really yummy. You know, uh, someone at my gym, Ryan, actually cut me on to something new with protein shakes. So have you ever had like any of the coffee flavored protein shakes? Mm, yeah, I think Ascent has a cappuccino. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yep. So yeah. I'm doing like a salted caramel, I think, from uh, Driven Nutrition mm-hmm. and... It's actually really good. And what, what we've done is instead of putting water in there, you just put black coffee in mm-hmm. and you put the protein powder in, you mix it up and it's it's so like smooth and creamy and it actually works. Like I was okay. thinking it was going to be gross. Yeah, I have put pr- powder in some coffee and it doesn't work. But yeah, yeah that sounds yummy. It was, it was nice. Yeah. Different, you know, that's, that's another thing. I've had to eat or, you know, just so much more like supplemental resources. Yeah. Yeah. Um, experiment yeah just to hit those macros Uh, there was one day i messed up i thought i had uh more fat than i did and so i started out the gates with a bunch of regular eggs and then i was like oh wait today's a low fat day so Mm. i ended up having to do like four scoops of protein it was nice (laughs) to get protein without that yeah yeah Um, yeah i usually do like a couple egg whites whole cup and then two whole eggs and like a slice or two or toast and that's like hits my macros pretty well for the morning um but I don't have to change my macros every day. <laughs> I can't imagine <laughs> switching back and forth and changing that up. You, you get used to it, man. Yeah, true. <laughs> true. I used to do a lot of turkey sausage, like breakfast turkey Ooh, sausage. That's nice. really good. Like the little links. And you just chop them up, put them in the skillet, and then you know, put some eggs and stuff in a tortilla and make like a breakfast taco. So that's always fun. When I was a little bit more picky like or strict, I guess, on like the macros I was trying to hit um, when I was cutting. So right. it would be like stuff like that. What are you doing with your your diet right now? Are you I'm just in maintenance? maintenance. Yeah, I'm in maintenance. So I follow uh, RP yeah. Strength, the the app, which is really good. Um, I've had a lot of success on it. I went through a cut recently, and then now I'm in maintenance. I've hit my two thirds time. So like the the idea is that you cut for, say, if you cut for like um, eight weeks, then for two thirds of that, that's how much you should be on maintenance before you try oh, to cool. cut again, because you can't cut and then cut again because your body just gets Usually you get too fatigued, you can't even take it, but right. your body kind of stops losing weight at a certain point. So um, maintenance does really well um, for that to kind of like set a new baseline, like mm-hmm. basically your body adjusts. So if you cut down from 210 to 205, for example, maintenance establishes your body at 205 and you might be more like 207. Right. So then you're good because then your body's kind of gotten used to that new weight. What happens with if you cut back to back is you cut down to 205 and then you try to cut again, and your body's still trying to go back to 210. Because gotcha. that's its last stable weight. That makes sense. Um, so you can usually do a weight gain right after a cut, obviously. So if like okay. you were to cut and then do a weight gain, that's fine. But maintenance, you want to have at least some amount of time, you know, a few weeks even, uh, just kind of riding a steady weight. That, you're, that way your body gets used to that new weight. Right. So could you do like a cut and then go and do like a bulk? Yeah. Like a clean bulk? Yeah, you could. 
Yeah, uh, it has that in the app. So you just say like, I'm done with this diet. I want to I want to gain weight now. And it's like, well, how much do you want to gain? All right, based on that, this is how long it should take to be right. manageable. Um, they do say though in their facts and stuff like not to like being a male at 15 percent it kind of doesn't make sense to do a bulk like mm-hmm. you want to be a little bit leaner than that um, just because after 15 percent of body fat you kind of don't the ratio between muscle and fat gain during a, a bulking is not as good as if you were a little bit leaner right so um, the goal here would be to maintain for a while and then what i want to do this winter is actually do a bulk oh, and nice. and try to pack on a little bit more and then I want to do a cut and then hopefully if the open has been scheduled, the CrossFit open, right. I'll lead into um, a maintenance phase right before the open starts so that way I can prep for the open in a maintenance instead of pe- prepping in a cut, which is really a lot harder. Right. So I want to do a bulk and a cut and then a maintenance phase into the open. That way hopefully I'll have new strength by then. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's kind of like the idea. And so... Um, Usually like one big cut, one big gain, and one long maintenance phase a year, I think is what I'm going to be doing is sustainable. Like summer, I just want to maintain because it's hot. I'm going on vacations. I'm doing stuff. Um, fall and winter, other than the holidays, like I'm not really indulging much. I'm right. not traveling as much. We're not doing as much. So I'd rather just um, cut then. That makes sense. And I actually do okay in the holidays cutting. Like maybe I just add a week to my diet because for that week I might not follow it strictly, but otherwise I've done fairly well in the holidays cutting. And then usually after January 1st, I'm kind of ready to eat. (laughs) (laughs) It's like I'm ready to hit the gym hard, you know, and and go. So I'd rather hit my maintenance phase then um, instead of doing the the new year diet like everyone else. It's like I'm ready to eat by then. (laughs) Um, I get that. Yeah. So what are your what are your maintenance macros like? Um, I'm trying to remember. Like, is it? Do you feel like you can eat like pretty much whatever you want, or is it? No, like, I can't. Okay. Um, like because like I can eat a lot. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> but I tend to balance it out. Like, so one day I might eat way over, and then the next day, I won't even feel very hungry because of all the excess eating. So then I'll eat less. So then that's I'll sense. say like maybe that crosses out. But usually every day I try to hit the same macros, roughly around there. Um, right. There's always going to be those splurge days. In maintenance, it's tough for me because I get, I get caught up in stuff and then I'll miss meals and I'm mm-hmm. not that hungry, but it's like, I know I need to be eating. Otherwise I'm not eating enough. And so I struggle with that. It's just, just hitting, if I'm doing six meals a day, like on my plan, then I need to hit those six meals. So every two hours I need to be eating a small meal and I tend to struggle. I'll eat a good breakfast and then I'll look down at my watch. And it's like noon. So it's like, well, I've missed a meal already. So now I need to double up. Right. So then I eat a bigger lunch, which means I don't feel hungry again in a couple hours, which means I'm pushing until dinner and I've kind of missed a lot of meals. Um, so I kind of struggle with that on maintenance more than actually hitting the macros. Usually uh, most days I would be under or right at, then I would be splurging. Um, yeah. Splurging is probably rare for me because I've just, I've worked really hard to develop the habits to not do that. Right. Um, because it used to be a, a really big problem. Every now and then it's, bowl of ice cream with butterfingers in it right you know you gotta have those those oh, times i miss ice cream right now <laughs> yeah yeah so stuff like that you know yeah. you gotta enjoy or like at, at your party last week um the root beer float you know it's like sure yeah. you know i've my macros went out the window that day <laughs> yeah it's like I, I work i work out all the time and i'm not on a cut so why am i gonna say no to stuff nope. like that you know obviously within reason like i could eat a whole cheesecake but i probably would not want to you know i just yeah. a slice or a piece of one. Yeah, that was one of the, the cool discoveries I've had here recently was, you know, everyone, when you start working out, you're like, oh, I want to see these results right away. Like, that's just the common thing, but it doesn't happen right away. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. You're not going to get jacked overnight. Um, right. But the caveat is true as well. It's like, well, you're not going to lose all your progress overnight either. So, right. you know, I, I took a week off when I was moving and getting settled in and you know, I was ordering pizza to feed my movers and, you know, we were just doing a bunch of takeout and stuff like that. So I was eating a whole bunch of junk and I was like, man, I'm, I'm going to suck at the gym when I go back. I'm just, I feel bloated and my weight's probably really up. And honestly, there, there wasn't a whole lot of change by doing that. And I was, I was, you know, pleasantly surprised by that. It's like, 
you know, you put in all this work, it's not going to go away because you mess up for a week or two. So yeah, just a little confidence boost for anyone that's, you know, fallen off the wagon. It's- well, it's like that old thing about the hedge against sickness, right? So you're, you've been doing, you know, mm-hmm. most things right for many, many weeks or months or even years. One week is not going to destroy that foundation you've built, right. you know, one week, one day, one meal is not going to mess that up. Um, yeah. And so that's always important. It's like you're building this, this this hedge or this investment, right? And you want to make some withdrawals. Well, you've got a huge savings account. And like it's it's loaded because you've been packing it away for so long. Um, so now it's okay to take take a withdrawal out of it, you know. Um, but the important thing is, are you making more deposits than withdrawals, right? <laughs> yep. Yep. I don't know if you me- you remember Kim Martin from Noof. Of course. So super ripped, super like amazing abs. I remember there's this photo of her. Um, she posted a, like on Facebook or something. It was this massive, crazy milkshake, like all all the works, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it, it's just kind of cool. Like, you know, people can have, you know, be like super cut and have those really great abs and still indulge in that kind of thing and not just lose it all. Sure. Yeah. And then there's the other side of that, that Instagram tries to tell you that many models or Instagram models are doing that all the time because mm-hmm. they post about it. Um, but that's not the case either. Well, yeah. So that's the that's the other <laughs> side of it too. It's like a lot of people don't get there doing that, but once they're there, they can. Yep. I think that's also important to know. It's like if you're overweight and don't have abs, once a week eating the biggest milkshake of your life or even every other week, it's probably not going to get you there, right? right. You probably won't get there. You're going to have to do a lot of hard work that those other individuals did to get there. And then once you're there, it's right. totally fine because you're not in a a deficit of of progress, I guess, like, um, right. back to the bank account analogy, you're in debt, right? If, if your goal is to get to a certain body weight or something and you're 5% away from that, I would say you're like in debt 5% right. and you need to invest in yourself to get there. And once you get there, you can take some withdrawals back out of your account because you've got a, a good balance in your account again. Right. But, but yeah, it's, it's totally doable. And I think that's, that's great. Um, when people do enjoy it and celebrate it, but it's also important for those that might not be there yet to realize like they're not going to find progress mimicking people who are already there. They're going to find progress mimicking all the hard work it took them to get there. That's fair. Yeah. That's a good point. Awesome. So what else is on the list today? Uh, ooh, ooh, rest days. Rest I wanna, days. I want to talk about rest days. All right. So this is something that I've kind of been experimenting with in the last couple of months. So back when the quarantine was, you know, like super crazy and things were like very locked down and all the gyms were closed. You remember you and I were working out and we were on uh comp trains programming. Yep. Thursday, um, Sunday. Yeah. Rest day. So yeah. But for a while there though, I wasn't taking a rest day in the middle. And I mean it was just I mean it was completely like wearing my body down. Um because uh, I, I was in the gym, I had this mindset I had to be in the gym, you know, five, six, seven days a week right. to actually see the results I wanted. Cause I was like, oh, that's what all the pro athletes are doing. I've got to be there all the time to get those gains. Um, and you know, that was my, my mindset. I was like, I'm going to be able to just, you know, get used to this load. If I'm in the gym all the time and I'll be able to become out like a beast. And, yeah. um, you know, what I've found was if I made myself take a rest day, you know, in the middle of my training week and just like kind of recover, I would actually come back the next day feeling like I had way more energy, feeling way less fatigued and, what I've ended up finding is by doing these rest weeks for about, I'd say I've been doing this about two and a half, three months now. Um, I've actually found taking that rest day in the middle makes the quality of my workouts for the rest of the week much greater because I'm not just coming in there, you know, sore and fatigued because my muscles actually had a chance to rebuild. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I've noticed in like the fitness community, it's like a debate, like, should you be in the gym all the time? Should you take a full solid dedicated rest day? And yeah, I mean, I, I think it's great. But, you know, from a social aspect, I think there's other benefits of taking a rest day because, you know, if you're in the gym all the time, you're kind of missing out on certain social interactions. So giving yourself a day off is kind of nice. So like tonight, you know, I'm going to go play some games with my brothers, going to go get a haircut, you know, all sorts of different things that I couldn't have done, you know, like necessarily like if I was in the gym. So it's kind of cool because you're kind of giving yourself that break and you're making it more manageable and more doable. So it's it makes it easier to make it a permanent habit versus like, yep. you know, I'm just going to go hard for two weeks and then I'm just going to take a week off and right. 
you know. <laughs> so Yeah, and that's important too, what you talked about, like feeling fatigued. So obviously everybody's different. It depends on what routine they're following, how hard they are working in the gym. Um, but if you're at the point where, so hypothetical person, sure. say they can sustain one hour of hard workout, that maybe it's a typical CrossFit class strength component with some conditioning or maybe just a 30, 45 minute conditioning piece every day. And like they can do it five days a week. So that's one example. And then you have another person that maybe they can do two days of two hour workouts, right. but then they're so destroyed that, you know, the third or fourth day, they can't even go into the gym. So who's going to get, you know, obviously to their goals faster. Right. It's like, well, the person who, who hits the quality workouts more. And so everyone has, um, I would say like a people, uh, people respond differently to volume and fatigue and, and different things. And so based on even your muscle composition, right. if you're more slow twitch or fast twitch fibers and all the nerdy stuff, but even just generally, like I know there's some workouts when I do them and I finish them, or I even look at them before I'm like, I know this is going to wreck me. It kind of goes back to what we talked about last time with when to RX. Right. It's the same concept, except remove RX from the conversation. This workout is going to require a lot of volume. What is that going to do to me tomorrow? Is tomorrow rest day for me? Like, am I planning on resting? Awesome. If not, maybe I want to adjust this that way I can hit the gym tomorrow hard. So then the whole scaling RX conversation goes back to what is my plan for tomorrow? What is my goal for this week? And I think that's that's the biggest thing is knowing yourself, um, learning yourself, and that changes as depending on your nutrition, depending on if you're cutting or gaining or maintaining, or even your age um, or your training age, like how long have you been training? Um, how can you handle stimulus, intensity, things like that? And so some people, based on their life, it might only be three days a week. Like that might be their maximal, like, ratio of workout work to rest right uh for other people it could be five days six days seven days some people they can go in and do 30 minutes hardcore seven days a week and they feel better that way and some people it's like i can do three days really hardcore and what's funny is they both will get maybe even the same results on the same timeline because it's just bodies are different um so it's really important like if you feel completely run down if you pick up the barbell and it feels way heavier than normal like an empty barbell Right. It's probably a sign that you're overtrained. And that's kind of what I was feeling. And that's kind of what made me start. So I guess I'm one of those people that needs that rest day. Because yeah. that, that was one of the, the warning signs for me. I was just, things felt heavier than they used to. Yeah. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense because I've been training harder. Yeah, well, so. like bodybuilders in a way, they can go in and they can do five days a week in a row. Because their workout is completely different. You know, right. and the way that they structure it is different. Like they only hit certain muscle groups in certain days. That's not the same in CrossFit. There's sometimes you will repeat back to back and sometimes you won't, right. but it's, it's a completely different stimulus. And so, yeah, like what are you doing and how hard are you doing it? That do you feel like you need to rest? If you do awesome. Um, it's, it's a tough one. And it's like, you're always just trying to figure it out. Um, but rest days I think are crucial. Uh, like you said, even from a mental aspect. So even if you don't um, need to take one, like you physically don't feel like you need to take one, right. maybe pick a day that you don't go in the gym and you do a nice long hike or something or a nice long walk or you just change up your environment just for the sustainability. But if you're one of those that has no trouble sustaining seven days a week in the gym, awesome, hit it. Right. Um, if you feel like you need to be in the gym but you know you're too tired to do it, go in and do 45 minutes of stretching sit on a bike for 20 minutes and just crank like yep. slow that way you feel good like oh i did something today i wasn't if, if it's really that hard like you're trying to establish those habits of doing something versus not go in and do it if you got the motivation but just back off you know the right. gas pedal a little bit you know just flow or just focus on lightweight moving well good mechanics um all that stuff is always always doable even if you're you're really exhausted um so there's always a, a mix there it's yeah. tough though. It all depends on the person. Like, if I had a client, I would might know them well enough to know. Like, yeah, you probably shouldn't rest today, or you should rest today, um, depending on how well I know that person. But if it's just you and it's just a guessing game with yourself, like, how do you feel? 
is it your mind telling you you don't want to work out or is it like your body and you actually need it right because i can talk myself out of workout pretty quick <laughs> i can tell myself i don't need it and like well i haven't worked out in six days but it's like well you still don't need this workout it's like shut up <laughs> i right. do i need to go in and work on this yeah. i get that halo time in <laughs> that's right that's right but rest days are great i love them i i do a thursday sunday if i feel really good or feel like or if i missed a day before or mm-hmm. like for whatever reason just feel like i need to do something i'll do something but um i still try to treat it as a rest day even for scheduling like doing right. this doing other hobbies and and things like that it's nice that i have two days a week i know for sure that hour that I'm normally or right. two hours I'm normally in the gym is available to do something else. So whether it's hang out with somebody, it's like, Hey, I got Thursday. I can do Thursday afternoon. It's like yep. every week I know I can do that because I'm not doing the gym and the yep. gym is, is more important. Obviously there's push or pull. Like I can move the gym to another day, depending on how important it is that right. I hang out with somebody or I move it to the morning. But otherwise I like to keep my routine and schedule. No, I'm, I'm the same way. And that's, kind of how I kind of schedule stuff with my buddies. It's like during the week, Thursdays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're working out hard and you're doing a hard program, like we were doing comp train, man, by Thursday, you need it. Like there's right. no way. Like I remember sometimes on Wednesdays, I'm like, I'm so glad. Like I can't even get through this workout very easily. You know, like right. I need a full day. And sometimes Thursday, depending on how hard I went and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday wasn't even enough. Sometimes Friday would be like, I still don't feel recovered at all. Right. Um, and that's even with decent nutrition and hydration and everything. It's like, I've noticed lately, like, I don't think I respond well to a lot of high volume. I always thought it was because I wasn't doing it enough. Mm-hmm. And then after the three months or whatever we're doing the comp train, some of that's pretty high volume. I realized like, I, I need more rest. Right. Whether it's my food is messed up, something's not right to where I, I still can't seem to respond to that volume as well as picking one or two days from that program and then picking a day where I don't do the conditioning piece at all because right. I just can't handle that kind of intensity any, uh, that many days in a row for that many weeks at a time. It's like just too much. Yeah. So like I'll pick some of the strength elements from it and then I'll, I'll pick some accessory work and then I'll pick a day where I just do the hardcore conditioning and then I rest. And I find that that's been working pretty well with getting like, um, cause I had mentioned last time, like overhead pressing gains and stuff like that. But uh, yeah. yeah, when to rest. <laughs> that's that's a good one. Um, so obviously, if you're watching this, comment below and uh, let us know your thoughts on rest days. Absolutely. Oh, I think ultimately it's the individual, and then what uh, what are they doing? Right. What program are they doing? Because if they're doing CrossFit, then I would highly recommend CrossFit. Even recommends no more than three days in a row. Right. So three days on, one day off. Three days on, one day off is like what they say. Um, yep. but if you're trying to establish habits, maybe come in more than that and just don't go so intense at all. You know, good coach, know yourself. Yep. Um, and what do you enjoy? Definitely. What's next on the list? I'm going to get into the nerdy side of the house. The now. nerd. We weren't nerding <laughs> out over fitness. <laughs> Different kind of nerd. That's right. <laughs> what, yeah, we, what do we got right. on the nerd side? Uh, dude, I actually wanted to talk about, uh, an experience I had with my cousin, um, last <laughs> week. So he does it involve shrooms or anything? No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. But maybe, uh, maybe the people who built this power supply. Um, so he he was building a PC because you know PC master race, right? We got to we got to build the PCs and get rid of the consoles. <laughs> hey now, <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. Consoles are PCs. They're, yeah, they're just pretty much. <laughs> they're limited. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just messing with you, man. That's all right. There's nothing wrong. Honestly, I I really wish that more of the Halo games were on. PC. They're coming slowly. Yeah. <laughs> 10 years behind. It makes, it makes me want to get an Xbox. Yeah. I'll be honest. You need to get one. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so he's, you know, I finally got him to build a PC. And, you know, he'd gotten like some refund money from his college because like, I guess classes were changed up because of the COVID thing. And he's like, well, dude, I'm in a position where I can I can build this PC. And he's like, I'm just going to do it now. And I'm going to build my dream PC. I mean, the, the specs on this thing were insane. Um, it was like a $2,000 build almost. And I was like, dude, this is crazy. So I went over and we were building it and everything was going so smooth. Like it just felt like a really smooth build. Like, yeah. you know, everything went Plug in and play. easy. It was just, it was how a PC build should go. Like if you've ever had a bad experience, you know, building a PC, like, you know, mess up like the thermal paste and you got to go like cl- clean it up or, 
you know, just things aren't mounting properly. Like ev everything was going smooth until we actually fired it up. And so I guess what we should have done is we didn't test each appliance as we were plugging it in. Um, so that probably would have saved us the heartbreak. But um, as soon as we plugged it into the wall, you just hear this clicking noise and then you hear this pop and uh, the power supply, like a capacitor, like literally blew up. Like it was smoke coming out of it. Um, yeah. It flipped one of the breakers in his house. And wow. It was, it was insane. I've never seen anything like that. I mean, the power supply literally exploded, right? Um, and then, you know, a couple of days later, he got a new power supply from Amazon and plugged it in and everything worked right. And yeah. he was lucky, at, you know, because technically all, all these PC parts are supposed to be built for some sort of tolerance to, mm -hmm. you know, power overload and things like that. So he was very fortunate in that aspect that nothing else was damaged. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's just absolutely bizarre to me that, you know what? What do you think the odds are of getting a power supply that that is so bad? <laughs> yeah, that it's just dead on arrival. Well, I guess like manufacturing some standards, like thirty percent failure rate sometimes. Oh wow! Yeah, I don't know what it is for this company or this power yeah. supply, but um, yeah, I had very similar incident, but it wasn't the power supply wasn't bad. I was in Kuwait, and uh, it was one of the servers that has the switch it didn't have an auto switch for voltage from 120 to 220 and so yep. i plugged it in i was like all right here's the adapter and plugged it in didn't realize that it didn't also convert from 220 to 120 and also didn't think to check the switch so plugged yep. it in pressed the power button and same thing like big old pop smoke came out um the rest of it was fine thankfully right. like if the power stops there it doesn't make it anywhere yep. else but uh yeah, that was an incident to get a new one shipped out to Kuwait from Dell, of yeah. all places. Yeah. Oh, man. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I got a little bit of hazing from people for that one. Oh, I would imagine yeah. so. I mean, I, I felt so bad for my cousin at the time, dude. I thought, you know, that was a serious investment that just tanked. Yeah. Well, they, they should have refunded him, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he, I think he's not going to have to pay for the power supply, yeah. which is good. And if nothing else broke, I mean, it, it all worked out in the end. So. I'm happy with the end end result there, but in in the moment that was that was scary. Yeah, you think <laughs> what did I do wrong, right? Right. Yeah. I, was, I was just like I seriously went home and I researched for hours just trying to think of like what I possibly could have messed up. And he literally just plugged in a new power supply and it worked and I was, you know, very yeah. happy to hear that. Yeah. Um I mean I've heard of power supplies showing up dead on arrival, but it is rare, especially if you're buying a really high quality one. Right. Like I could imagine some sketchy one, but like He's building an ultimate PC. He probably didn't buy like the cheapest no, power supply. They have really good reviews and everything too. Yeah, I can't so. remember the brand, but it looked like it yeah. was decent. Well, that's how I uh, get some of these consoles cheap is they show up. I buy them like dead. And uh, usually it's just a power board solder or something and fixes it right up. There you go, like, man. That's the easiest way. Like that PS2, uh, the power board was bad. And oh, nice. uh, it arrived. I tested it to make sure it was bad. And it for sure was, you know, with a little multimeter. And then uh, just order another one, 20 bucks. Fuck yeah, dude. Thing fires up. That uh, Halo Xbox, actually, power supply was bad on it. Um, had a bad solder on the power board. Just quick solder, man. It's so so simple, right? It's it's pretty cool. Obviously, there's a risk because it could be other components, too. Right. And then you're buying something broken from eBay. It's like you're stuck with it. But, uh, you know, it's always fun when you fix something and get it working for cheap. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Interesting. Well, um, for me, I guess gaming wise, nerd wise, this last week, um, last podcast, we, I talked a little bit of crap about Call of Duty and ended up <laughs> giving him some of my money. And uh, I downloaded the new uh, Warzone and it swallowed my Xbox hard drive completely. <laughs> but that's okay because the campaign was actually legit. Um, maybe I'm just been out of it so long that I was really impressed with it. But I would say, I tried the Advanced Warfare and a couple others recently, and so this one just like shines way above all. They brought back yeah. some of the characters. Um, there's also a new Spec Ops mission you can go on now oh, um, that cool. kind of continues the storyline, but it's it's really cool. Um, very interesting storyline. Uh, they come in kind of mimic like uh, the whole Benghazi scene um, in it, oh, which is interesting. Like you're you know. Spoiler alert, it's been out since last year, so I don't think I'm spoiling it. But like you're at one point you're protecting a, an ambassador and like these waves of people are coming at you and there's a field. Like it looks just like 
the whole Benghazi thing, but you're in a fic- fictitious oh. country and stuff. Um, and then there's also a couple other scenes that are pretty interesting with like, you know, the use of chemical weapons and stuff. It, it's pretty cool. Um, so I thought it was really well done. I was really surprised um, after reading how many bad reviews this game had. Right. Like I was really tempted not to buy it because like there was hundreds of reviews that says do not buy, do not buy. And I realized most of it was hating on the multiplayer. Like right. they went with a completely new style, I guess, of multiplayer where there's a little bit more camping involved and like mm-hmm. everyone hates that because they're used to just running around and shooting really fast. But if you play right. Warzone, which is the other part of that, it's like this free, um, free to play cross platform um, yep. battle royale. It, it requires some strategy. Like you can't just drop and then run around and gun everyone down real right. fast. You actually have to like sneak around. You don't want to give yourself away. You want to complete missions, but not get eliminated by somebody while you're trying to do these side missions inside the battle royale. So I would say they're getting a lot of haters because they went a slightly different direction than what they had been doing. Um, the campaign was great. I would say it's probably the better campaign in a while. And then, of course, the the whole multiplayer aspect is really good. Um, but it is different. It's it's definitely different um, than some of the older stuff. But I have zombies on there and all that. I think they have zombies. That you can play but yeah the war zone is, is awesome so even if you don't want to pay for it you can get the free free to play uh war zone and you can play the war zone thing yeah i've actually played war zone a couple of times so yeah. I, I really like it yeah it's a different spin on the whole battle royale for sure um i love the whole like gulag concept yeah like you get a fight for your chance to get back in the game that's yeah that's definitely unique out of all the other battle yeah for sure. i would say yeah that's really cool like um so what he's saying is like if you get killed in in the Mm -hmm. battle royale sometimes you get a chance to go to the gulag which is like this little prison and then like you have to fight someone else who's also landed there and like if you win then you get a chance you get to come back and you parachute back into the the arena which is really cool because um right it's not like you just die and respawn or you just die and that's it it's like oh there's a chance 50 50 chance you could um return yep um, and then, of course, I think your teammates can buy you back if they've collected money and then gone to yeah, a place. It's like 4500 or something. Yeah, they can like purchase you back, which is pretty interesting. So if your teammates care about you. But like, it's the, the kind of games that you need to have either people you know or people who have microphones right. and stuff. Because otherwise, when you're just playing it solo and you just get paired up with somebody and you can't even talk to them, it's really tough to play because it requires some strategy. It's not like you can just run around and do your own thing. Like right. If you go off on your own, you're likely not going to make it. Um, or you're, you know, not gonna complete much while you're doing it. Just like Rainbow Six, you gotta, you gotta be yeah. able to talk to people. <laughs> Man, that game's tough. Like, <laughs> it's tough. I tried playing it again the other day, and it's really tough to play Siege and not be super experienced in it. Right. Because like, I can't figure out if the strategy is to move really fast or to move really slow. And that, that's the thing is like it, it depends on the team because some people like against. just rush it and they they do just fine and then every time i rush it i just get killed <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but then if i like i go slow then someone gets to me somehow and i never see them coming or like i see them and i pull up to draw on them and, and then like i'm dead like it's like i don't even feel like i get a chance to shoot back right. half the time <laughs> it's like it's like 5d chess man you have to you have to run different plays like you're, like you're playing football or something yeah. like and just hope that the other team doesn't have a good defense for it. Yeah, and it's like if you don't know, if you don't know the maps, which I'm still not quite there yet. I think that's also a yeah. huge drawback. Is the game's been out so long, I'm I'm playing catch up. Well, what sucks about it is, you know, I'm I guess I'm more of season six siege player because I've been playing for a couple of years now. Um, they've gone and revamped a bunch of the maps, so like a lot of the old classic maps have been changed up a bit and they're oh, okay. a little different. So there's like. I've got to go and relearn some of the maps myself now. And then they've added new maps. And so I have absolutely no clue on, you know, where the cameras and stuff are on those maps. But yeah, yeah that's the thing in learning the operators and their special abilities. Yeah. I didn't realize until just the other day, some of the things that you can do and I'm like, Oh, okay. So maybe that makes it easier or this guy's got a shield. Okay. Um, or like the whole hacking thing, you can hack into like the enemy and see. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's just stuff I'm like trying to understand and learn. Um, I guess I'm trying to make it play it too simply, like just go in and do the objective and leave. And it's like, well, there's all these other things you can right. do to to help you succeed. <laughs> I'm like, surely all I need is a gun and feet, right? And I can walk in and do what I need to do. Right. <laughs> 
And that's the thing too. Like some of these games you have to invest time in because you want to get these like upgrades or options to your character. Like even the Call of Duty thing, it's it's like that sometimes. And yeah. so it's like, well, it's like the new guy doesn't have nearly the advantage of some of the other people, I guess. Right. I'm starting to notice a trend in the, the gaming industry overall. Realism is getting really popular. People want their games to be more realistic or have that more like real life effect. Right. You know, because like you said, old school Call of Duty is just, you know, run around, shoot. Like, that's not how warfare is. Whereas, right. I don't, I've never been to war, but Siege looks like it would be a little closer to the real thing as far as like you actually have to use tactics. You have to the tactics and strategy, and, right? Yeah. There's There's a realistic element to it. And plus you see all these survival games coming out now. Like people are just, they, I don't know. I think, I think there's something to realism right now being the really big popular thing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Cool. What else has got on the list? Dude, I, I want to talk about this new Paper Mario game, man. The I, new old one? <laughs> yeah. Um. So the, there's one that's about to drop on the Switch. Yeah. Um. And I... I've I've always loved the Paper Mario games. It's kind of like that that Pokemon style of fighting where you take turns. Yeah, it's like know. RPG, right? Yeah, but it's it's just a straight up copy of the old one, isn't it? No, I thought it was a brand new game. Oh, Talking about the Origami one? No, I thought it was the one from the '64. But... So I think they're they're porting that over. But there's also a brand new. Oh, okay. Like, so like I, a whole new game into the series. When, when you messaged me Paper <laughs> Mario and I, we were talking back and forth. I was tracking the 64 oh, one that they they're putting on there. 64 or the GameCube, I can't remember. Um, I think it was 64. Uh, yeah, it's showing up on the Switch, but apparently oh, there's an another one. So yeah, awesome. they're actually dropping like a brand new one. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, it looks really good. So the, the I guess like the the protagonist or antagonist in this game is um, like an origami king, right? And so you know it's a paper world, so he's turning everything into origami. Uh, nice. making it like 3d and just taking over um so like the whole world is kind of like corrupted in a bit like it's like missing pieces um and so you'll go and you'll collect like paper bits and kind of like fix stuff um it's got that whole classic paper mario vibe of like the standard like fighting style like i mentioned it's kind of like pokemon but mm -hmm. there's also like an element of timing in there so like oh, if you cool. time your combos you can actually it'll, it'll like reward you um but now they've added a new system to the combat where you actually have to like you get um to rotate the board a bit so everyone spawns on a board right before the battle and you get to rotate it to try to like optimize your combos uh. and so there's like a little puzzle at the beginning of it so you know they, they've kind of expanded upon the pre-existing combat system and i i really like the changes oh that's here cool for it. yeah the switch is we talked about that last time the switch is just doing some interesting things that that as a just straight up fan of some of the old games and new games I'm I'm enjoying because like um, what did I do recently? Thanks to ads and Instagram, um, I had an ad from Nintendo Online saying, "Hey, for twenty bucks for the year, you can have access to like seventy NES, SNES games on your Switch." Right. And I was like, "Okay, shut up, take my money." <laughs> <laughs> like, because we were talking about that last episode, I was like, "Oh, it'd be really cool to buy up some of these or have a right. subscription because all the NES and SNES." SNES games like five dollars, ten dollars a pop, or whatever they were. It's like, man, I would like to have access to like a good amount of them and play some of them here and there, but not have to like pay for each one separately. And I don't know if like I was behind the curve or if they listened to us, but uh, <laughs> there it's there. Uh, Nintendo Online Shop. And what's funny is you can buy Switch wireless controllers that are the recreations of the NES and SNES controllers. I actually did not know that. Yeah, so that's those are released cool. for like 30 bucks or something. And um, Ooh, they are totally legit it. molds of the originals, but they're wireless, like, Switch. Right. Um, so that way you can play the, the games with a straight-up real controller. And I'm just like, man, how cool is that? That's phenomenal. You can plug the Switch into your HD TV, whip out the NES controller with its wireless, and play a straight-up NES game or SNES game. There's some pretty good titles. I got. It's a lot of the ones that show up on the classic uh, right. systems. Like, so... Star Fox 2 is on there, which was unreleased in the U.S., but showed up on the um, SNES Classic. Um, but it's also in there, like Donkey Kong Country, like all the good ones, of course. Um, and then NES has a good amount of stuff. Mainly the Marios and the Zeldas are there. So Zelda 1 and 2 are on there. And then SNES has uh, Link to the Past Zelda as well. So if you're into Zelda, like that's three 
three so far, plus Breath of the Wild on the Switch. <laughs> so they're getting there, like we talked about, getting all the Zelda games in one place. So they're getting there. Um, but it's then, like a yearly subscription thing? You can do monthly, like okay. a couple bucks. And then you can add your family members to it, so they can do it too. Um, but I, I went for the whole year because it was cheapest, and I already had some leftover money from buying something right. else on there. So yeah, 20 bucks gets you for 12 months. And then you just turn off auto subscribe so it doesn't renew at right. the end of the year. And it's not bad. No. It's Are you not able to download all. the games or do you have to stream it? They download. Okay. I don't know if you need internet connection every time you use them or not. Yeah, because it'd be cool if you could play that offline. But you can, but as soon as like it's downloaded, I think it's all offline. I need to test it. Um, if it if it has to have a internet connection every time right. you fire it up or just the one time that you first download it, make sure you have it. Because to me, like I paid for the year. So the date should be correct. Like this game should be playable offline until this day because I already paid, right. but maybe not. Um, but it, you definitely aren't streaming the game because um, those games are like kilobytes in size. They're super tiny. Right. If you ever played with emulators and ROMs, like yep. a ROM file is super tiny <laughs> for SNES. I remember back in uh, high school, we had this like uh, SNES like ROM player um, and this guy like was passing around a file and it was just... The file was literally named not 756 NES ROMs, and that's nice. exactly what was inside. <laughs> yeah. And then the whole emulator. Well, my Xbox, original Xbox, is modded, and I've oh, nice. FTP'd ROMs to it because that's how you can transfer things to the hard drive is actually through FTP from your PC, um, and that's how you like load stuff onto the Xbox hard drive. So, right. yeah, I uh, transferred stuff over to it and played on there. The only thing with ROMs, though, is like the N64 ROMs aren't that great. They kind of a little bit buggy. Yep. But the SNES and NES are okay, but then again, it's you're playing on an Xbox controller. It's not quite the same. Um, the fact that you can actually get that, like, that SNES controller. or Yeah, NES yeah. or SNES. And then not only that, but even on the Switch controller, it plays really well. It's not like having a, a janky ROM on, right. your, on your whatever. Like It plays really well. You can freeze frame. You can save like moments in time, and you can rewind the games. Oh, that's cool. So, like, you get some of those ROM features that people always talk about, like, you know, you never could save an NES game, right? Like, a lot of the games, anyway, back in the day. Right. Like, if you're playing Mario Brothers, like, you, you had to leave it on, like, if you wanted to continue. Right. So, it's <laughs> like, dude, you could totally just save it and come back to it later. That's and, like, awesome. you're exactly where you were before. So, that's, I think that's one of the coolest things. It's like, if you never had time to play through some of these games, some of the longer ones, like the RPGs and stuff, as a kid... You can totally play it through because you can save where you're at. You can save multiple save points. You can rewind it. So we can kind of repeat. Like if you screw up, you can just hit rewind instead of having to like restart. So yeah. that's kind of nice, um, no, especially really for games cool. like Donkey Kong Country and stuff. It's so much fun to play. Um, did you ever play that on the SNES? Yeah. 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 We used to play that so much or even the first original Star Fox. Like so much fun. Yep. Good games. Yeah, man. Now, do they bundle that with their online play at all? Like, you can play it online with other people. Okay. Yeah. But like, so I pay like a couple bucks a month to use like Switch's online thing, kind of like Xbox Live. It's like Nintendo whatever, Online. Whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Oh, so if I have that oh. already, then yeah, if you oh. fire up your Switch and go to Nintendo <laughs> Online, like in the shop, Man. you'll see NES and SNES there, and just click download. Uh, there's also a Tetris ninety nine there as well okay yeah check and see if you have it you should have it if you have the nintendo online because you can play these games online with yeah. with friends making me look like a noob <laughs> sorry no uh, same here i'm just catching up like i said uh decades it feels like i've been yeah. out of the world so i'm just catching up so yeah whatever that is that nintendo online subscription that's that's what it is that's super cool so like i had no interest in playing people online with switch but when i saw that i was like yeah, yeah i'll like do that a couple bucks a month okay. yeah 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 so 20 bucks for the whole year that's sick yeah, so I'm gonna like, have to go home and check if I have that. Yeah, I'm, I think you do. <laughs> it's just a picture of the controller. You click on it, and that's like got all the games inside. I'd of actually it. love to go back and play that um, old yeah. school Paper Mario game. Yeah, it'd be cool if they had that on there. Because I don't think Paper Mario was on the SNES, was it? Uh, oh wait, I'm thinking in 64. Yeah, it was on the 64. They do have Super Mario 2 Yoshi's Island. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, very Which cool. Which is pretty cool. Um, but they got some. They even got some odd titles, like Japan titles, in there that we never would have had. Yeah, which is really neat. But it's like seventy total games, and I imagine they'll swap them out every now and then, like right. put other ones Mix up. It up. Yeah, because there was some. I forget which one it was, but it was like 
to me as a kid, it was one of my favorites, but it's obviously not there. Like the old Indiana Jones game, which is, I think, a LucasArts game, right. believe it or not. But like Indiana Jones' Greatest Adventures. Played I played Indiana that so Jones. much. Oh, yeah, Lego <laughs> Indiana Jones. I'm trying to remember other SNES games that weren't there that I was kind of surprised. What else was there? They're really good. I used to play um, none of the Jurassic Mario Parks. Paint on the SNES. I don't know if you ever played that. It was oh, you had it with the mouse. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That was a that was a good. Yeah, one. I had a an aftermarket mouse that I bought on eBay that I, I recently resold. I got in a bundle of controllers. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's what it was for. Is an SNES mouse for Mario yep. Paint. It was it was super cool. It was basically just Microsoft Paint, but a yep. little little more like Marioized. Yeah. If you will. I love that little. Uh, do you remember the the fly swatter mini game? There's a bunch of flies and you hit them with the fly no. swatter. It was in MS Paint or oh, that's so cool. Mario Paint. Yeah, I never had it. Um, growing up, we didn't have many of the SNES games. Oh, gotcha. But yeah, Mario Paint. That's cool. That was a cool concept. Yeah. Old Nintendo pushing the envelope. Definitely. Yeah. Hmm. Well, what else? What else we got on the list? Uh. I don't have a whole lot more myself, at least not from the nerdy side of the house. That's all right. That's all right because Cyberpunk's coming out soon, so we'll be able to Ooh. talk about that. So I've already got it because yeah. um, I got the console, so it's just as soon as it's available, it'll download. Um, I think it's September. And then uh, uh, what else is coming out soon? Obviously, Star Wars Squadrons is coming out soon, Getting which we sick. talked about last time. That would be fun. Um, and then you got to get on Halo 3. Yeah, I definitely. Need or to you go just back. need to come over. We need to play all the campaigns. Honestly, I would love to just marathon the Halo. Dude, campaigns. we should like like I said before when we started recording. Um, anytime I get a new game, I always for the campaign, especially for shooters, I always stick it on the easiest mode and just blast through it really quick. A to quickly learn it, and then B to enjoy the story without the interruption of me being bad at the game. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Because it kind of feels like a movie that you're a part of if you do it yeah. that way. If you do it like if you. Say for Halo, Halo One. If you were to put it on hard or legendary, and you hadn't ever played before, um, you're gonna have a bad you're gonna time. have a <laughs> bad time. You're not gonna get very far very fast. Right. If you put it on normal, you might get okay, depending on how good you are at shooters. But I mean, if you put it on easy, like you're just gonna, like, like it says in the description, like uh, they're gonna flee from you. Like you're just this basically super god coming through and just annihilating all the enemy right and that's what i love about it it's like you know you just feel like you just blasting through but you get to enjoy the movie at a much i think more digestible pace than um before especially us working and stuff and having lives it's like man if i sit down i would love to get 20 percent of a game done in an hour and a half right like think about it versus like the last of us you might get one percent like or grand theft auto right if you think about those games they're so massive but like a lot of the shooters and racing games you usually get through pretty quick so if you put it on easy mode man like four to six hours you should be done with the game at least the campaign um and then you can just jump to multiplayer if you want or like sometimes i'll play it back through but play it at a harder setting once i've kind of enjoyed the story and then i'll just skip all the cutscenes, which saves me more time yeah. <laughs> but yeah that's that's kind of that that's kind of like my my strategy is like even call of duty it's like if you've never played call of duty before this is the setting you want and i put it every time i'm like yep recruit i want the easiest thing i want to get through this story have a good time feel a little invincible you know and then uh then i'll uh, jump online and get destroyed by people who yeah. are really good at the game <laughs> That's that's the um the downside of growing up is we're not in high school anymore, can't drop twelve hours on a game in one day. <laughs> yeah. I've done weekends before, like I want to do this game this weekend and Oh definitely that way, but that's even like clear your schedule kind of thing. Right. Like, you still have to be pretty available. Yep. Or you do the other thing, which is you try to burn the candle on both ends and stay up all night. But if we're talking about our rest days and fitness, you gotta get sleep. Sleep is so important. You gotta get those eight hours and so it's tough. I would be down to do like a an all nighter, get some Red Bulls up in here, just play a bunch of Halo campaigns. Though. That'd be sick. Yeah, man, <laughs> we'll do it. We'll uh, we'll do from Reach, which is it's out of chronological order on release dates, but it's it's story wise correct. So if you start yeah. with Reach, and then go one, two, three, four, five, and then leading up to six. I've actually recently played through it. I did Halo, I think, in Halo One. I think I did in like three hours. 
uneasy because it's just it's i've played it so many times and right. I, I know exactly what to do and stuff it's so like i was like oh this is easy but the remasters just look so cool so it's cool from that point but it sounds like it's gonna be like a couple of weekends here and there i think we could do halo one and two because they're a little right. bit smaller campaigns and a little bit faster to get through um especially co-op if we're working together we should zip right through it right um Three, I think, is a little bit longer. I can't remember. Um, three, and then four and five. To be honest, I can't even remember four and five. I only played them once. Whereas, like, Halo 1 through 3, I was pretty big into gaming when all those came out, so I played them multiple times through. But right. four and five, I only played the campaign once. So I can't even remember the story, which is why I'm trying to, like... And I could go Google it and read it, but I'm trying to, like, lead back up and be fresh for Halo Infinite because it's supposed to pick up where guardians leaves off and like i'm like i can't even remember where i was like in right. guardians or even four i don't even remember four very well i know cortana kind of loses her mind a little bit but um that's all i can remember from that <laughs> it's like okay but i recently played reach and that was really good yeah um and so i enjoyed that which unfortunately reach was the last bungee title right before it went to 343 but i think 343 is getting a good grasp like i think four's campaign was really good and then five's multiplayer is really good, so maybe six will be like a good combination of both. Right. Um, and it's tough picking up a franchise that people love and trying to do it your own way. Like you're gonna make oh, yeah. enemies. One hundred percent. I mean, just look at the Call of Duty. They changed a couple little things, and like everyone freaks. Everyone out. hates it. Like there's like go and read the reviews. It oh, makes I'm... you think that like it's straight garbage. Like you're like, wow, like really they made this bad of a title, and you play it like, no, this is really good. Oh, there's right. just that many haters out there. Honestly, there's there's a lot of toxicness in some of those communities. Someone sure. told me that the other day. They were like, "Yeah, first person shooters are like super toxic." I'm yeah. Like, what does that even mean? Like, you just game with your buddies, right? You ever you ever been in a CS:GO lobby? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Keep it that way. Counter Strike. No, I never got into the whole Counter Strike mess. I, I'm not a big fan of it personally. I've played it a couple of times. It's one of those games where you just like. A lot of people love it, and so like when you're playing with some buddies and stuff, you kind of get roped into playing it. And that's that's me in Fortnite. I hate Fortnite, but I will uh, play it from time to time. Do you ever do Overwatch? No, but it actually looks really cool. I actually yeah. didn't like it. And I read the same thing, like super toxic. I'm like, okay, they're like, don't even bother getting into it now. Right. I'm like, really? Like it looks like a cool game, but if it's mostly online and you're dealing with people who've been there forever, maybe not. Right. Um, did you ever play any of the Halos on PC? I played the like the first one, so we were actually able like, back to playing games at school. We were able to put that one on a flash drive. Oh, nice! And actually, there was something there was fun something funny like at our school they gave every student like their own like shared drive, and they were like allotted like fifteen gigs or whatever. Oh, nice! So and you so, put it on there. Um, the one of the network admins got mad because he's like, I just deleted three hundred gigs worth of Halo installations. <laughs> Nice. Like, so all these kids had a Halo installation in their their uh, private drive, yeah. so they had Halo in every class they went in, and I just thought that was really funny. <laughs> Did that have the Forge option? Halo Forge, have you heard of that? I don't remember. So the, I know 2 and 3 have it, or it's available on the PC. It's like this world where you can um, create things no, and do things. So no, it's no. like, uh, um, I would say like a Minecraft-esque Halo world. I know, I, I know what you're talking uh, okay, about. Okay, yeah, now, yeah. But, um, I never actually got into it, but with Halo Three out on the PC, I'm seeing a lot of like clips of people doing new things in Forge that are available. I was like, I totally never went into that whole right. side of it, like where you can like fly ships that you never could fly before. You can like move objects, create objects, delete them. Um, that was in Reach too, right? I or think so. Two? I think yeah. it's been in all of them since two, yeah. Halo Two, at least on the PC. No, I, I um, think the one maybe there's some on the console too. Yeah. I think this one was like just literally like Halo One. It was the one that was on that classic map that you're like in a canyon. There's two circular bases. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Tanks and the base yeah. Base. Halo One came out for the PC and it wasn't remastered first, yeah. and then they came out with the anniversary. But yeah, I had it on PC as well, um, just because for Halo One it wasn't multiplayer, um, Xbox Live anyway. Right. When they released Halo One, it was before Xbox Live existed for the original Xbox. So the only way you could play online was crossover cable to your PC through a system link emulation. Otherwise, you couldn't play Halo 1 online. But the PC version came out, and obviously you could. And so I remember I bought it for the PC just so I could play other people online. 
Oh, nice. But of course, Halo 2 came out as Xbox Live compatible. It's just yep. funny to think that Halo 1 came out so long ago that Xbox Live didn't exist yet. That is kind of crazy to think about. Yeah. Yep. Halo 6 coming out soon. Looks good. Yeah. I think actually in a few days, there's this a big... Next week, uh, Microsoft is doing promising a big um, announcement or oh, nice. footage or stuff of some of the releases for there's the new, new console. Or... Yeah, so maybe we'll talk about that next time. Very cool. Awesome. Well, that's all for us uh, at Gamers Gone Wad. Right. Follow or us on yeah, follow us separately, Joe Manismo or Anymore76. There you go. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it.